spring concert of the Pitts Greensboro Chorale, Festival de Musica, a celebration of Spanish, mu Spanish music and Spanish composers of many eras, complemented by both music ancient and modern from France and the US. We are grateful to all of you and to our gracious host of St. Mark's for providing us the opportunity to share our musical work with you tonight. Our first set highlighted the work of Renaissance composer Juan Vasquez. Vasquez lived and worked in Spain in the first half of the 16th century as a singer and composer for the Catholic cathedrals and royal courts. He even taught the singing of ancient plain chant to the, quote, disorderly choir boys, unquote, of the church in his hometown. As a composer, he focused on a Spanish musical form known as Biancico. The most famous, sur famous surviving Biancicos are Christmas carols. Indeed, chorale and chamber singers performed both last semester, Rio Rio and El Adondo. But the genre began as a Spanish secular form. The three pieces together told a tale as uh, the sadness of Con que la labore, How Will I Wash Away My Pains. The story turned to fond remembrance, but the most complex piece of the three, De los Alamos Venga Madre, where a poet recalls the discovery of a great love under an aspen tree in Sevilla. It culminated passionately, lost in the beauty of the eyes of the poet's lover. Our next set instead connects a Renaissance contemporary of Esquesis, Francisco Guerrero of Sevilla, to the haunting medieval music of Guillermo de Machel. Guerrero's music is relatively simply put, in two musically identical verses with proud imitation cycling from voice to voice. Machos, in contrast, weaves two rhythmic, com rhythmically complex musical lines in the upper voices together, with the lower voices filling its unusual harmonies. The skipping, you will hear, rests in the middle of the text filling its unusual harmonies. Uh, the syllables in long melodic lines is called pocketing, a distinct trait of Machos. Yeah, such, uh, such disparate musics are united through their depictions of nature and love. Guerrero's Prado Verde y Florido imagines an exquisite flowered meadow with shady groves, a place so delightful that he hopes it can soften the heart of the woman he is to he loves. Machot too depicts the splendor of nature in a field, rose, lily, spring, and greenery. But this time it is to declare that the beauty of his love outshines them all.
evening again. I'm Chris Bartley. I'm the music director of the Pitt Greensboro Chorale, and we are so excited to see all of you out here this evening for Festival de Musica. And our next piece in our program, it is our delight to bring the first public performance of Josh Bridger's Ya Eres Mia uh, for this concert this evening. And Josh, I hope that you're there on the live stream, and so I'm waving. Uh, Josh Bridger and I uh, grew up together uh, in the Boston area, a good friend of mine all the way through high school. Uh, Josh Bridger is a true Renaissance man. Uh, he teaches physics and astronomy and calculus. He builds electric guitars uh, from scratch out of wood, strings them and everything. One of the finest chefs I have ever met, an outstanding pianist and a composer and about probably 50 other things that I can't remember right now. Uh, two years ago, I was privileged to be in attendance at his wedding. And for his wedding, he wrote this piece for his wife. Uh, and I heard it there, and I said, would it be all right if we could perform it here with Corral? And he said, oh, I would be so honored, and, uh, and, and he was very pleased, and so we're very glad to be able to bring it today. Unlike the pieces you've been listening to, which are very sectional, you've heard that they have uh, a lot of repeated music with new text uh, in different ways throughout. This piece is through composed. Every new line of text has new music associated with it. And uh, Josh said that every new line of text was something new that he wanted to be able to share with his wife on, the, on his wedding day, and thus a new musical idea and a new sentiment for everyone. So it's our delight to bring this first public performance of Ya Eres Mia to you.
set begins with an excerpt of Venezuelan composer Alberto Grar, Casame Legati. Grar is an internationally recognized composer, conductor, and music educator. Having chaired the choral program at Simón Bolívar University and worked with Venezuelan's wildly successful music education program known as El Sistema, Casame Legati means the earth is tired, and it is the only line of the text in the music. In this arrangement for women's voice, we hear it chanted again and again, adding new melodic phrases in each voice to create an impressionistic collage of choral sound. In pairing this, Casame is meant to establish the setting for J. Aaron McDermott's text, Te Luches Ante Te Terminu. It is based on the 8th century text of St. Ambrose, a lullaby that asks for peace and safekeeping through the night. It begins and ends with some of the most gorgeous choral writings you will ever hear in your life with dense and riveting harmonies that arise from the simple stepwise motion of each voice. In between, McDermott probably captures the dread and fear of the night through aleatoric compositions. Aleatoric music means music of chance. Once the sopranos introduce a new melody at Pro Pool Echer Somnia, each individual choir voice sings at his or her own pace, creating a mass of evocative dissonance from which the night terrors fantastically emerge. McDermott's work has been a favorite at choral festival, festivals around the United States for several years. And we even included this section of work in the 2011 choral collage, The Raven Stills the Light. We are so glad to revisit it fully with you this evening.
Our next set is three Spanish pieces arranged by 20th century Catalan composer and pianist Joaquin Serra of Barcelona. Serra was an accomplished composer of songs and ballets and directed music for both the Radio Association of Barcelona and the band Barcelona. Professor Bartley found a collection of his choral arrangements in a music shop in Barcelona two summers ago and was glad to hear them come to life in the voices of Corral. El Tiki Tree is a silly song, taking us through the poet's courtship of Maria, through his exasperation with her and most especially his mother-in-law. Tiki Tree itself is a nonsense word, best translated as crackle crack. At first it perhaps represents his attraction to Maria. By the end, crackle crack seems to become how he construes anything they say to him. Each verse moves the melody into a new lead voice, while the other three create different accompaniments every time. Fandangio is a sorrowful dance. The poet begins in a dream from which she does not want to awake, and she shoes away the birds of dawn that try to rouse her. We learn that she mourns for the loss of her mother. Not even music she hears offers her comfort. A man singing in the street is too hoarse, his throat filled with the flower of his mills. This time, the melody falls entirely to her sopranos, who tell the story while the other voices outline underneath the rhythm of a dance that is reminiscent of a habanera. La Perroquia means the parish, and it tells the droll tale of poor Simon. Simon, it would seem, can't seem to get with the program of his parish, as he won't cry for the sermons, fast for Lent, or even work in the fields with his family and friends. Though perhaps appropriate for the season, Simon does somehow get out of paying his taxes. Each verse finishes with a rousing chorus in which Simon's aunt asks him, what the heck are you doing? To which Simon responds, that's not for me. Like Tiki Tui, the melody moves around the choral texture while the other voices support with new harmonies and rhythms for each. Okay, enough with all this Tiki Tui. Here's three by Joaquin Serra. Three, three, three. 
Thank you again for coming on out this evening as we get close to the close of our program. It is always a great delight here in our last concert of any semester to be able to look back not only at the accomplishments of what we've done as a group, but what we have done uh, outside of this uh, of, uh, of Corral and all of the things that all of these students who devote so much of their time as psychology majors, visual performing arts majors, education majors, people involved in the military, and still finding time to be able to come do this amid all the things for which many of them were in fact honored today. Today was our honors convocation, where many people were recognized for their inductions into honors ceremonies, uh, uh, into honors uh, uh, groups, excuse me, uh, and also uh, were uh, honored for some, many of their achievements. Those who were honored today, could you raise your hand? Please give these students a great round of applause. In just two weeks is our graduation ceremony where three of our, uh, of our singers are going to get a chance to be able to walk across uh, the podium and receive their very well-earned degrees. And uh, it's time to take a moment to look at all the things that they've accomplished and be able to congratulate them for what they've done. We have three who are graduating, and I'd like to tell you a little about each of them. Uh, first is Liz Kelly. Liz, will you raise your hand? Uh, I got to know Liz uh, at the very beginning and at the very end of her Pitt Greensburg career. Uh, she was a student in my Western Art Music class as a first semester freshman. Uh, she had never uh, studied music in the way that we studied together in that class, but it, she for sure wanted to be able to show that she could do it. She came to me regularly. We talked about the music and how she was studying, uh, and she was one of the class's very best that fall. Uh, she then spent the next four years studying management and rocking the pitch on our soccer team uh, and pl playing there and one of their leaders there. And then in January, she came to me at the first rehearsal of Corral looking to finish her time at Pitt Greensburg in song, the first time that she had sung uh, in a choir in at least four years. Uh, my only regret, Liz, is that I wish you would come to us sooner. It was really fantastic to have you singing with us. Thank you for making Corral part of your final uh, path to graduation. Please join me in congratulating Liz Kelly. I'd next like to honor Tori Kent. Tori, good way to you raise your hand. Uh, Tori came to me about this time last year, wanting to add a course of music study into her senior year as a communications major. So we planned together. She was going to do piano skills. She was going to take Western art music, music theory. And I said, well, how about chorale too? She said, sure. So she came to join us this year. And we have been so lucky to have her voice and her heart uh, all of this past year. Uh, she has so clearly shown to me and to all of us uh, having music in her life this year has made all the difference and, all, and made it all the more satisfying for her. Uh, but one of my, something that really sticks with me from uh, just very recently, uh, she had a chance to travel to Spain uh, about a month ago uh, uh, as part of her spring break uh, studies, uh, where she visited a museum and she discovered there a portrait of Igor Stravinsky. And she had studied uh, Stravinsky uh, in our class just this past, uh, past fall. She had a really long chat with others who were at the museum at the time, uh, and even the tour guide complimented her as to how well she understood the Rite of Spring and knew about Stravinsky's life. Uh, and she wrote to me with really great excitement about, oh my goodness, all, everything I've been doing and I've been able to show it off. And she said, I wish you'd been, uh, been there with me to share in the credit. But Tori, I say to you, and really I'm saying to all of our seniors and to all of you who are studying here at Pitt Greensburg and actively engaging in it, it's your knowledge now. That's what you're taking with you as you are graduating. All that, that, that you've done uh, in this university, it's part of who you are now. Wear it proudly. Uh, please join me in congratulating Tori Kent. This is my second chance to be able to honor Alicia DiPaolo today. Alicia, could you wave for everybody? <laughs> uh, she was the recipient of the Corral Service Award at Honors Convocation earlier today. Uh, and so I had some chance to be able to talk, uh, uh, talk about all the wonderful things she does for Corral then. And I'd like to share some of those, but a few more as well. Um, in fact, it might be easier to tell you about the few things that she doesn't do uh, to save time, but, uh, or you know, 
uh, you know, talk about the few people that she hasn't touched in her time here. But uh, there are a few activities that I'd like to highlight uh, uh, because her career here at Pitt Greensburg has been very memorable. Double major in the visual and performing arts and psychology with a minor in Spanish. She was a presidential ambassador, a Vera Hines scholar, which enabled a summer of study in Costa Rica. She was the co-director, set designer, and co-star of last week's production of a very Potter musical as her senior capstone project. She's a documentarian working along with uh, people like Cam, right in the back, say hello to Cam, who's been uh, live streaming for us. Uh, she's a documentarian. She traveled with her colleagues in Pitt Greensburg Media, Media to Honduras to film uh, UPMC Healthcare's work in the country. Um, she was a little bit torn on that one because she had to miss some crowd rehearsals for it, but ultimately, the excellent thing to do. So, And amidst all of this, I've always seen that she has time for her friends in need, whether it be her need in corral, need in studies, just need in life, that she's always able to make time for those uh, that she cares about. Um, and to kind of sum, uh, sum up all of that up, uh, I offer in my very best uh, Potter musical, uh, Dumbledore, um, Alicia, nobody does all this great stuff together like that except for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, for all that she does and all that she can do, I'm humbled that she made Corral such an integral part of her experience, that she was willing to give to us as much as she gives to all of UPG. She stands on the precipice of graduation as a four-year member of Corral, serving as its president for two years, as an enthusiastic recruiter and promoter uh, for us, an organizer for our attire, so they can all look so good. Uh, at the and, and at the same time, I also remember her at her very first semester uh, as a very quiet freshman that sang a short solo for us in a John Rutter piece. Look at how much she has grown. She's now a leader amongst her peers, helping them work better and accomplish more, and does so without ego or without conceit. Alicia, thank you for touching all of our lives. Thank you for being such a kind and wonderful friend. Uh, because of what you've given to make Corral such a special group, I know that our future is bright. There will be many singers who will come to Pitt Greensburg after you, and they will have great experiences making music together in the group that you helped to shape, but no one will ever replace you. Please join me in congratulating Alicia DiCaolo. One more that we're going to share with you tonight is called If Music Be the Food of Love, uh, set by David Dickow, uh, based on the Twelfth Night te text, If Music Be the Food of Love, play on, but we think it is apropos, as uh, David Dickow did, to adopt it to If Music Be the Food of Love, sing on.